next task number three is our next QoS model called pipe. So here we have to configure R2 to queue packet based on the experimental value of the incoming packets as the, the following, which is for the EXP5, we want to prioritize the packet with the 15% bandwidth. And for the EXP3, we want to guarantee bandwidth using the remaining of 15%. And then we need to make sure the original DSP value in the packet is intact. Okay, so that is the main difference between pipe and short pipe. So as I mentioned just now that the short pipe used the original packet DSCP values to perform the queuing as it leaves the PE router. But for the pipe, we want to make sure that the QoS that's being set by the MPLS network to enforce as the packet leaves the PE routers. So the queuing is going to be based on the incoming experimental value. So in this case, it's going to be for that particular packet we're playing with is three. The idea is still the same because as the packet comes into R2 and leaves R2, the top label or the last label will be removed. So R2 needs to somehow store that information and then so it can later enforce as the packet leaves this interface. So the same concept applies here with the QoS groups. So we're going to come up with a QoS groups that maps the our incoming EXP values to the particular output queues. So this time the configuration is going to be on R2. So since we know we're going to use pretty much the same table map as what we have on R4, let me quickly look it up. And it's going to be for experimental to QoS. So I'm just going to simply copy that and paste it on R2. Then for class map match, same thing, match any. Let's see if we can copy that too. Look for class map. Okay, so I need the class map match any. So match any of these EXP value. And it's going to be the from MPLS. So we'll map the EXP to QoS. So same idea. That's what we did on R4. And then the incoming interface for R2 is 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, service policy from MPLS. Okay, and now we have to do the same thing for the output queues, but this time let's just go ahead and do a regular class map matching QoS group 3. So match QoS group 3, and the other one is 5, so match QoS group 5. So that's our EF and CS3. And now for the policy map, we're going to call it 2, come up with a different one called 2LAN EXP. Since we already have one that's called 2LAN, we're using the DSCP value for queuing. So we come up with a different one. First, we'll match our class QoS5. And for that, we're going to give a priority percent of 15. And then for class QS3, we're going to do a guaranteed bandwidth remaining percent of 15. Okay, and the interface that we're applying this to is the output direction of fast 00. So service policy output, copy to land. So I have to remove what we had previously. Here, remove, and then put that in. And now let's run another test. Restart Wireshark. R6. Ping. Sends 01. Extended. And 184. Stop. Everything looks pretty much the same here with the original packet has experiment of 5 and 5. As it arrives on R3. The top label was modified to have EXP of 3. As it arrives in R2, we have that EXP of 3 comes in on the VPN label. And now if you do a show policy map interface, okay, we should be seeing, or should be having two policy map. One is from MPLS, and you can see that it matched out all experimental class map, and then the setting of QoS group happened on five packets. So I said five packets, the number of packets marked was five. And then as packet leaves the LAN interface, it hits the policy map called 2LAN EXP. You can see right here, it matched our QoS group three. 
because the incoming exp was three and here we have five packet match okay as before if we were to do with the short pipe model we were using the dsp value and would have matched the priority queue that we have matching the dsp value of ef but now since we want to enforce the same qs policies as what happened inside the npls network at the egress of the pe router we were queuing based on the experimental value of three for this particular packet okay so that's the behavior of the pipe model, which is the experimental value is maintained throughout the MPLS. And that same experimental value is used as the packet leaves the egress PE router, while the original DSCP value in the packets is maintained. As you can see that on the second request packet here on our Wireshark is to have our EF in the DSCP value of the IP packet. Okay, and that completes our task number three. Now moving on to our final task number four with QS model of uniform. First, we need to redo our task number two so that the original EXP value is preserved using the explicit null. Okay, just let's go back to our diagram and kind of refresh our memory of what happened at the router R4. So the packets that's entering router R4 has two labels. And as the packet leaves R4, the top level, which was the transport level was removed is due to the PHP function. So the top level has to be pop. And that was because the R4 was receiving a implicit null label from R2. So R2 was letting R4 know that it needs to remove the top label before sending the itself a the packet. And that's when the QoS information was lost. And that's why we have to kind of copy, uh, perform this copy function of the top level to the exposed label. But that's one way of doing it. If you want to maintain that experimental values, in case the experimental value was changed on the top level as the packet traverses the MPLS network. Another way of doing it is to use explicit null. So explicit null is another type of a reserve type of label. And explicit null is basically a label that contains no value. And the only views that actually matters in explicit null label is the QoS information and the TTL, obviously. So we can pretty much configure R2 to ask R4 to not to remove the top label, but instead replace that with a explicit null label. And that way the QoS information is maintained because no label will be removed. So that's basically what we're gonna do here is to get rid of this QoS group mapping that we have going on and then just leverage the explicit null label to carry the same uh, QoS information on the last hop. Okay, the way to do that is actually let's on uh, for us do a show mpls forwarding and this is to a r2 loopback so you can see that it has a pop tag as part of the implicit null so now we're going to do is to configure r2 with explicit null so instead of implicit null it's going to use explicit null and you can kind of enforce that only to certain uh, subnets if you like by tying that to a access list. But here I'm just going to do them all at the global level. And now going back to uh, four, we'll give it a second. Okay, right here, so you can see that instead of pop tag, now we have a tag value of zero. And that's basically the indication of explicit null being communicated across. So now if we go back to router R6, well, actually, let's go ahead and remove the QoS policy that we have configured on the output interface of R4. So that would be serial 00 colon 0. Okay, so remove that. And now let's do another ping from R6. So ping 7701. Yes, 6601184. Okay, again, this time let's look at R3 first. Packets entering R3 has EXP of 5 and 5, and again, we kind of change that to 3 on the top label. And now, if you look at R2, as the packet right here reaches R2, leaving R4, you will see that. Before we only had a single label right here. When we copy the experimental value down from top label to the bottom, but now the packet is arriving on R2 with two labels. 
Okay, and the label values of the top label is zero, and that's the explicit null. But what matters is the explicit null label also carry the original experimental value of three. Okay, and that way we don't have to worry about worry about copying it down to the bottom label. And now if you look at the policy map interface command on R2, you will see that as it leaves the R2 LAN interface. It got queued as part of the QoS uh, group three. Okay, so we know that the F two was using the top label. Okay, with the exp three as part of the output queuing. So that basically accomplishes the same thing when you do whether the short pipe or pipe model. So next, we need to configure R two to propagate the exp value of the incoming packet down to the packet original DSCP value. And we need to verify this by pinging again R six to R seven with DSCP EF. But when the packets arrives on R seven or leaving R two, the DSCP value should have become a CS three. Right. So now we're going to take our pipe model one step further. Let's go back to this diagram. So before we're just going to with the pipe model, we're forwarding based on the incoming EXP value. So with the uniform model, not only that, you're forwarding on the egress PE with the original, uh, with the incoming EXP value, we're also going to copy the EXP value down to the packet DSCP. So not only that you enforce the same QoS policy throughout your MPLS network, that same QoS policy, we also want to enforce that. Or being extended into the LAN segment to destination as well. Okay, that's why we want to propagate down to the DSCP, and that's for the uniform model. And the way to do that is very simple, since we already have the class map policy map set up on R2. All we need to do is setting the DSCP value. So let's get under the policy map, and that would be two LAN EXP. Okay, first for our class QoS Phi. All we need to do is set IP DSCP EF. And then for our class QoS3, we want to set IP DSCP uh, CS3. All right, and that should allow R2 to basically rewrite the SCP value based on the incoming experimental value. And if we rerun our ping test one more time, Ping 184 all the way. Here's our ping. Let's stop. And what we want to verify is basically part of this packet right here as it leaves R2. And before it has it maintains the original DSCP of EF, but you can see now the packet has been rewritten to a CS3. Okay, so that way the same QS policy can be enforced throughout the LAN as well. And let's go back to R2 real quick and do a show policy map interface here for our QoS3. We got five additional packet match. But in, in addition to queuing, we also setting DSCP to CS3 and you can see that so far we have five packets being marked. Okay, so that's our behavior for a uniform model. Not only that the EXP value is maintained throughout the MPLS and EXP also being copied down or maintained during the last hop of the MPLS network. The packet's DSCP value is also being rewritten so it can be treated consistently until it reached the destination. And that's complete our task number four. As you can see, the short pipe, pipe, and uniforms are nothing but series of class map policy maps commands that you are already familiar with on the routers. I know that gives you our guidelines on how to implement QoS in MPLS. So you can choose to follow or to come up with your own QoS strategies if you want. Uh, what we saw also was how to use the table map to copy the EXP value down to the next label that's being uh, exposed. So QoS can continue to be enforced consistently throughout the rest of the MPLS. But like I mentioned, you can pretty much accomplish the same thing and save yourself from all the table maps, configuration, and class map policy map that goes along with it by using the explicit null, which is basically a label that has no number and it pretty much only carries the QoS information. But the downside is that it's the extra full byte of the MPS label that the packet needs to carry on the last hop before it hit the egress PE routers. Okay, so that should wrap up our video on MPLS QoS. 
You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching LabList.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.